So welcome to Lilybug's Library. My name is Linda and I'm coming to you today with um, the book haul I said I wasn't going to do. <laughs> so I know I said I wasn't going to buy any more books, but they were on sale. I know that's not an excuse, but <laughs> so I got a few and so we'll talk a little bit about them today. I'm pretty sure most of them will probably get read like next month maybe, um, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> Okay, so the first one is called uh, Match Made in Paradise, and it's a Paradise Alaska Romance by Barbara Dunlop. So it says, um, uh, the first in an enchanting new contemporary romance series featuring rugged Alaskan pilots who are about to meet their matches. And then it talks about this uh, supermodel, Mia, who has found herself under the scrutiny of the paparazzi after her much older husband dies and leaves her his fashion company. So she ends up jumping on a plane and going to Alaska and meets a, a pilot um, who's flying the beautiful blonde into town. So anyway, that sounds like it could be a, could be a romantic little romp. So the next one is uh, by Janine Roche. And it's a Whisper Canyon romance called Aspen Crossroads. You can see I was in a romance mood when I started ordering these. Uh, so it says, to protect the most those most vulnerable, Haven Haviland must trust her heart and her regrets to a mysterious newcomer. It says, few in the community of Whisper Canyon have actually met Jay Staring, a reclusive man who recently moved to Aspen Crossroads, the farm at the end of edge of town. But that doesn't stop rumors from spreading. He must protect the truth that his farm-to-table restaurant will provide new livelihoods for human trafficking survivors, or he risks the safety and futures of those relying on him, except he can't do it alone. So he enlists uh, her help and it goes from there. So I love the covers on all of these. They're so pretty. All right, and the next one is uh, called uh, Hooked on You by Kathleen Fuller. It's a Maple Falls romance. So that one's really cute too. And it says Riley McAllister is living the dream in New York City, if the dream means being a struggling mixed media artist, part-time food delivery driver, and having a carefully curated social media to hide all of the above. She refuses to admit defeat and move back to small town Maple Falls, but when her grandmother breaks her leg sliding into third base during a softball game, she was safe by the way, Riley reluctantly agrees to go home and help the woman who raised her while secretly hoping she can convince Mimi to sell her house and yarn shop and move in with a good friend. Then Riley can return to her life in New York City. So she ends up going to look after her grandmother and uh, meets um, Hayden Price, who is a local baseball star. So anyway, that sounds like it could be cute. Um, I really like the fact that her grandmother was sliding into the to third base and that's how she broke her leg. It's like, not all grandmothers are frail. <laughs> so yeah, that was cute. All right, so this one, I love the cover on this one too. It's uh, by Rachel Lucas and it's called The Telephone Box Library. Look at all those colors, so pretty. And it says, um, the Cotswold, the perfect retreat for a stressed out teacher and Lucy has found just the right cottage for a bargain rent. All she has to do is keep an eye on Bunty, her extremely feisty 90-something neighbor. With her West Highland Terrier Hamish at her side, Lucy plans to relax and read up on the women of nearby Bletchley Park. But the villagers of Little Maudley have other ideas, and she finds herself caught up in a campaign to turn a dilapidated telephone box into a volunteer-run library. So I think that one will be really, really sweet, and I like the fact that it's about turning a telephone box into a library. So the next one, again, like the colors that um, in different styles that uh, illustrators come up with, I just think they're, they can be so nice. This one's, um, and I'm sorry if I get the name wrong, it's by Yuzma uh, Jalaluddin, um, and it's called Much Ado About Nada. You can see all the vibrant colors. And this is the same person who wrote um, Three Holidays and a Wedding that I reviewed in December, I think. So yeah, that when I saw the name and realized who it was, I thought, oh, well, we'll try another one. Because I really did like that one. Uh, so this one uh, says, Nada Saeed is stuck. 
On the cusp of 30, she is still living with her brothers and parents in the Golden Crescent neighborhood of Toronto, resolutely ignoring her mother's unsubtle pleas to get married already. While Nada has a good job as an engineer, it's a far cry from realizing her startup dreams for her tech baby, Ask Appa, the app that launched with a whimper instead of a bang because of a double-crossing business partner. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, nothing in her life has turned out the way it was supposed to, and Nada feels like a, f a failure. Something needs to change, but the past is holding on too tightly to let her move forward. So, we will see if she manages to do that. But, love the colors. Alright, just a second here, I'll take a sip. I find the weather is starting to change, and sometimes I find it too dry. So, especially the first few hours in the morning, it's everything's... Um, my throat feels very dry. All right, so the next one, and I think this is probably one of my favorite covers just because I really want to be in this little spot. It's by Denise Hunter, and it's a Riverbend romance, and it's called Riverbend Gap. Now look at that. Doesn't look, that look like the perfect place to sit and have a picnic? Yeah, although I think it's fall there, unless those are, I can't tell if those are flowers um, with the orange or if that's like bushes or something, but... So I'm not sure if it's fall or summer, but very pretty. Um, so it says, she came in search of the family she'd always wanted and found the kind of love she'd never dared imagine. When Caitlin Loveland's car veered off a winding Appalachian mountain road, she thought she was done for. That is until Cooper Robinson, the local sheriff's deputy, came to her rescue. And though Kate narrowly escaped her brush with death, she still fell hard. She wasn't the only one, but soon Cooper learns that the woman he's more attracted to than any he's ever met is his brother's new girlfriend uh oh and therefore unquestionably off limits yet despite their best efforts cooper and katie can't seem to avoid running into each other or ignore the undiable undeniable chemistry between them hmm okay well interesting um it'd be good for book club if you're part of book club i see on the back it says it includes discussion questions so that could be good um so yeah we'll see but can you imagine getting being um, your car going off the road in the Appalachian Mountains? It's like, oh, that's that doesn't sound good. Not that your car going off the road anywhere is good, um, but especially up in a mountainous range, like she's lucky she was found at all. So the next one, I'm still on the uh, Abby Jimen Jimenez train, and uh, so now I got the friend zone. So I've read um, Yours Truly and uh, Part of Your World, so I want to see how this one goes. Uh, so this one says, um, Kristen Peterson doesn't do drama, will fight to the death for her friends, and has no room in her life for guys who just don't get her. She also is keeping a big secret, facing a medically necessary procedure that'll make it impossible for her to have children. Planning her best friend's wedding is bittersweet for Kristen, especially when she meets the best man, Josh Copeland. He's funny, sexy, never offended by her mile-wide streak of sarcasm, and always one chicken enchilada ahead of her hangry. Even her dog stuntman Mike adores him. The only catch, Josh wants a big family someday. Kristen knows he'd be better off with someone else, but as her attraction grows, it's harder and harder to keep him at arm's length. I love the fact that her dog is called Stuntman Mike. I, I know there's going to be a story behind that, so that one sounds great. And then the last one's um, kind of off the track for me. I, uh, I don't know why I bought it, but maybe it was the cover. Maybe it was the thought of something a little different. Uh, but this one is called The Roomy Prescription, and it's uh, got a beautiful cover, as you can see. So yeah, I really love the cover. Uh, but Rumi is, and again, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he is a uh, poet, I believe. And although it doesn't look like a like poetry inside. I don't know, we'll see where this goes. But it says, uh, the Rumi prescription is a testament to the healing power of art and its ability to bring peace to our battered souls. Sometimes the cure we need is not a pill, but a poem. So it's a, a memoir, I think, of Rumi, uh, interspersed with the poems. Oh, yeah, here, it tells us a little more in the front. Uh, Rumi's inspiring and deceptively simple poems have been called ecstatic, mystical, and devotional. 
To writer and activist Melody Mosey, they became a lifeline. In the Rumi prescription, we follow her path of discovery as she translates Rumi's works for herself to gain wisdom and insight in the face of a creative and spiritual roadblock. With the help of her father, a lifelong fan of Rumi's poetry, she immerses herself in this rich body of work and discovers a 13th century prescription for modern life, addressing isolation, distraction, depression, fear, and other everyday challenges we face. The book offers a roadmap for living with intention and ease and embracing love at every turn. So, yeah, could be good. But um, but I do love that cover, that um, the rich blues and everything in it and the, and the little bird. Looks very spring-like, right? <laughs> so that one, I you know, that one was a bit of an um, impulse buy. But uh, anyway, they, uh, they all sound terrific, and I'm looking forward to, uh, to diving into all of them. So do I dare say again? I'm not buying any more. So I'm going to try to keep to that. We shall see how it goes. Um, so otherwise, everything's, uh, everything's fine. We um, had the uh, eclipse, um, and that was uh, certainly interesting, not something you see every day, a total eclipse of the sun. So um, I hope wherever you were, maybe you got a chance to see it as well. And uh, I'll be back with you in a, another couple of days with another arc. So we will see you then. Bye-bye.